this verse a few times i'm sure but you know let's be honest the holy spirit wrote this passage on marriage and it is preeminent it's clarifying it's powerful and it's and it really should shape our view of not only what marriage is but also our understanding of the church right. ephesians chapter 5 now we always pick it up in verse 22 right right that's the brother's favorite verse right here. Wives, submit to your husbands as you do to the Lord. Like, the man in the room are like, hey, man, that's right. But you know, we're skipping some, aren't we? We're skipping something. Oh. We're kind of jumping in ahead of something. Look, look at verse 21. It says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now, I think this passage certainly applies to any of our relationships in the kingdom. We should view our leadership and even some of our disciples. We should be have the heart of like, I revere Jesus. So I'm going to submit to you on this matter of opinion, like having a 230 meeting. Amen. That's in a matter of opinion and we're having one. All right. So thank you for being submiss submissive. Amen. But, but in the specific context of this verse, we are looking at what? Marriage. So when this says submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, it's addressing the, the woman submitting to the man's lead and the man submitting to the woman's needs. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, and it talks about wives submitting to their husbands. Amen. For the husband's the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he's the savior. But already the Holy Spirit is trying to connect our understanding of our marriage dynamic to our view of God's kingdom and God's church. So there's a tremendous amount of learning that can happen in our marriage relationship when it comes to our view of God and God's people and God's kingdom. Yep. So the mar our marriage relationship is a treasure of learning and maturing and understanding of Christ. Verse 24, now as the church submits to Christ, so the wives also submit to their husbands and everything. Wow, that's, that's a tall order, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, sometimes that can be pretty uh, difficult to be submit submitted to, I'm sure. Right? Amen, brothers? Amen. I mean, we, we, we want respect, but sometimes we're not worthy of it. Mm. Sometimes we don't deserve it, you know? But when a woman gives a man respect, even when he doesn't deserve it, that is one of the most merciful, gracious things they can do. It shows a very submissive spirit. And I'm not saying that justifies a guy like me or any of the men in the room, like continuing our sin or continuing not being worthy of respect. By no means am I saying that's okay. In fact, it's like keeping burning coals on your husband when you're respectful when he doesn't deserve your respect. Do you understand? Yeah. But don't get vindictive, though, and think, well, burning coals, so I'm going to be nice. <laughs> it's really not the heart we want to have, okay? I digress. Verse 25. Here's some medicine for us, guys. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. Again, weaving very tightly together, our understanding of God's kingdom, the body of Christ, and our dynamic in marriage. There's a lot that the Bible's trying to teach us here about how we view God, how we view the church, how we view Jesus, and how we view our spouse. There's a lot intertwined here. But this says that we're supposed to love our wives as much as Christ loved the church. That means when I want to do what I want to do because I feel like I deserve to get to do it, I got to put that on a shelf and take care of my wife. Like we had a great lunch with the uh, Kirshners and, you know, you hang out with the Kirshners, they're going to disciple you a little bit. That's just going to, it's just kind of collateral thing that's going to happen if you fellowship with the Kirshners. And of course they ask you, how you doing? And you just feel like really wicked if you're not like, well, this is what we fought about yesterday. 
<laughs> and uh, and this is what Amy's feeling about you know my schedule and this and but all the before you know all of our sin the last couple of months is on the table. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Right. Take advantage. You gotta take advantage. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I hope you have a conversation like that. If you haven't had one yet this weekend, you do. You need to have one. Mm. Yeah. Why? How are you gonna lay down your life for your wife and meet her needs? If you're trying to do it on your terms, mm. like, okay, as we get older, man, let's just be honest. Our body's got its own thing going on sometimes. Yeah, I was talking to my brother, Tony, he's standing. He's like, yeah, bro. Um, I got my hip replaced some part cyborg now, you know, <laughs> and I think I'm going to get the other one replaced. Cause it's starting to bother me. Aww. Like Tony cannot tell his hips that it's just fine for him to lug around these speakers or something. That's not going to happen. Aww. Nope. He's got to treat his body the way his body needs to be treated on his body's terms. You understand? Yeah. Like he's got to deal with this, the fact that, you know, an older guy he can't be slinging around and schlepping around a bunch of heavy weight. You with me on this? Yeah. In the same way, our wives, brothers, they need to be treated according to their terms. It's like the guy who gets flowers for his wife every day, but his wife's like, I just want you to spend 20 minutes with me. Right. Thanks for the flowers, but... Um, they just, can we just hang out for a while? You know, the Christians were talking about how they have a cup of tea. They have like tea time every day. <laughs> they take a little time, like 20 minutes in the afternoon and they have a little tea time together and they just talk and connect. And I'm like, oh, that's very pretty. It's just lovely. <laughs> oh, maybe we have to do that together. I don't know, dear. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> tea time. Yes, yes. As I share these things with you, I hope it sets a backdrop for you to think about the things that Amy's going to share um, and uh, we have a panel that's going to come up here and answer some Q&A questions as well. Uh, but I want to turn over to Amy because I know she has some things she wants to share with the sisters. Amen. Amen. Well, I love this verse uh, because, sorry, can you help me with this? Yeah, of course. I feel like it's like right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I appreciate how it clarifies that Jesus is the head yes. of the church. And it helps remind us of our place, you know, as wives, because ultimately, as women, if Jesus really is our head, then we're not led by our emotions. You know, I, I really think that's that because I, you know, unfortunate, un unfortunate circumstance helped me come up with this thought uh, because we I, I lost my head last night. We got home. I was tired. And, you know, when you're tired, it's easy to give way to the flesh, which we were just oh. talking about with the women, but our emotions. Right, Patty? Thank you. Um, but just really not giving way to the emotions that just immediately come uh, when we feel like we're dealing with the kids all day or we had a hard day at work or whatever it is to not let the emotions lead and guide us. Because I was thinking, I, I, you know, I think women were planners. So I don't know about you guys. We can get anxious. We think through a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, you know, all the way to double A, double B, double, triple A, you know, all the way to triple Z. So we're thinking through all the details of all the things that need to get done. And then I know I can want to like impress that upon my husband and make sure he's clear on what my plan is and how he's supposed to follow through with it, you know, but I, and that's when my emotions are leading me. And so we have to be super careful not to let our emotions lead, but making sure Jesus is the head first and foremost. And, um, you know, you'll only ultimately let your husband lead and guide you if you're letting Jesus lead and guide you. Mm. So if you're lacking submission in your marriage, ladies, then you're not letting Jesus be your leader in the first place. And I think that's really critical as it goes back to our walk with God. It goes wow. back to those times with God where we're on our knees, where we're praying, we're really submitting, like not just going through the routine of prayer, but making sure we really do surrender mm. these things over to God. Because I have to just, because on our own, right, we are not submissive. We have to pray to go, God, help me to say what I need to say and be at peace and leave it at that. Or if if my husband's not listening, I can talk to a brother and let them deal with it <laughs> and not feel like I need to force my way into making the decisions in the home. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> you can tell on me, babe. That's quite all right. <laughs> a woman who will tell on you, brothers, will save your soul. Yeah. She shouldn't have to, but if she does, you should thank Jesus she does. It's a little quiet in here. I hope you're encouraged, guys. I'm a lucky man if she'll tell on me. It's all good. Let me just go down to this one. You want it? Yeah, I got it. 
Okay, no problem. First John chapter one. First John chapter one. First John chapter one. This passage has saved my heart. This passage I committed to memory many years ago when I was struggling with understanding confession. And I didn't understand how to be transparent. I think one of the most important things I want to instill in us today, one of the most biggest practicals, is you need to be transparent in your marriage. It's absolutely critical that you don't have any sort of sin pack going on. And Ananias and Sapphira had a sin pack going on. Nobody knew except the Holy Spirit, right? And the Holy Spirit chose to reveal it to Peter. And Acts 5 is a very sad story about a couple deciding that they're not going to really talk about what's really going on in their life financially. And the Lord handled it in a very, very, very intense fashion. They both ended up dying because they lied straight face to Peter the Apostle. Mm. Now, the Lord's not doing stuff like that today, last time I checked. Mm. Okay, No one here is claiming to be an apostle. At least I hope not. Anyway. <laughs> But there's so many blessings. We get so focused on the embarrassments of being open and transparent about fighting with each other. Right? Let's call it what it is. It's a fight. Yeah. Stop trying to sugarcoat it. We say stuff like, well, my wife and I had this discussion. <laughs> you did, huh? You guys disagree? Well, it was a mild disagreement, but we discussed it. Are you resolved? I think we're resolved. <laughs> Trying to sound all spiritual and wise. You know what? You want to sound spiritual and wise? Just cough it up. Amen. We're not unified, um, and uh, we need to work this out. I'm struggling. Come on. She's annoyed with me. I I got bad attitude about that. Um, what do I do here? I mean, I think I need to do this. But what do you think? Can you give me some Bible? That's what sounds spiritual to me. That's somebody's like, hey man, I, I could use some. Can you help me grow? We've been married for 21 years. And she's still really beautiful. Anyway, so I'm easily distracted by Amy. Um, but but I got to tell, tell you, we still have plenty to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have plenty to learn. Like, I hope that when I'm married for 41 years, I'm not thinking I got it all figured out because mm -hmm. I won't have it all figured out. There's going to be new problems. Yeah. Maybe I'll have my cyborg hit by then. I don't know. But. <laughs> First John chapter one, verse five. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If, if, you see that verse 9, guys? 1 John 1, 9. If, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we've not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. You want to have an interesting marriage discipleship time this week? Talk about your last fight. When's the last time you talked about your last fight? Hopefully it was your last tea time. I don't know. We get open about it, but we resolve things and, and we're good and we're unified now and everything's fine. Yeah, but you're not learning anything about your dynamic and how you treat each other. Wow. You got to be preventative. Like, don't, 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 don't rationalize being unopen about conflicts and, and dissension in your relationship because you've mitigated it, right? Like when you mitigate something, it means, that, oh, you know, we said we're sorry, we're fine, we're good. But in reality, there's still some underlying things going on that you're not dealing with. Do you understand? Because we can be copacetic, can't we? I mean, I don't know if you, you realize this, but as a married person, you have to learn how to be copacetic. Because you, you, got, you got to be like, okay, I can't deal with all this right now. I'm going to deal with one piece at a time. You with me on that? Like, if, if Amy came at me with everything that was wrong in our marriage in one sitting and just unloaded everything, oh, my gosh, I'm going to feel like I'm the worst husband ever. I'm going to feel so discouraged and defeated. But in her shrewdness, and she's mature, she's like, I, I got I to gotta give, I got to be forbearing with, that's the biblical word, okay? Forbearing with my husband. And let's deal with the big things that are going on. And then as we deal with those things, let's deal with another thing. And the same thing goes for me. I can't be like, well, Amy did this, and Amy did that, and Amy acted this way, and Amy this, <laughs> Amy that. And then I'm sitting there, and now, now it's all about bashing my wife in a detail. You're not trying to prove who's right in a discipleship time. Be the wrong one. 
Let me just talk. That's where I messed up. Let me just talk about that. Why? I want to grow. I want to be in the light. I want my sins forgiven. I, I want the blood of Jesus to purify from all unrighteousness. I want to be a better husband. I want to change. I want the years to get better. That's one thing that impacted me talking to Michael. Michael and Sharon today, they were like, and the years are getting better. Mm-hmm. Man, I want to be able to say that. I feel like they are, mm-hmm. but I want to make sure it's clear, you know, if every year is getting a little bit better, a little bit better, and I'm learning a little bit more how to be a, bad, a better lover, a better friend, a better leader, a better man. Why? Because I want to be a better disciple. Now, I think transparency is super important. You guys, you got to get open about stuff. Don't, please, don't hide anything. It's going to destroy you. It'll rot you from the inside. That's how you end up dying spiritually. And marriage can be a great catalyst for change and growth, or marriage can be a very catastrophic thing if you're not transparent about your challenges. Now, look, having kids doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't, right? Having kids won't always bring you closer. Some of you are like, yeah, I know, amen. Amen, I don't even figure that out, right? Having three kids won't make you closer. <laughs> Having tens almost drive you crazy, but I got to respect the Gonzalez's character. Right? <laughs> Amen? Come on, Liz. Joe's been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We love you. Anyway, but I know my wife has some things to share about this. Awesome. Uh, I am so grateful for discipling. Um, I don't know how. I mean, we literally, I mean, we're just telling Michael and Sharon, there's no way we'd be married if it wasn't for discipling no like way. uh 21 years like i they said they had done it for nine years before they had you know they were in the kingdom and so i i just can't imagine because no. we had a rough time well i think part of it was open openness we learned from early time in our marriage to be open and honestly i could not handle it i was like you struggled with what and i <laughs> and i was very embittered by the things that came out but because of discipling it's helped mold and shape and change the way I think and help me to not be self-righteous when I would confess my bitterness. That's not confession, really. You know, the sister goes, oh, so what, what, what's your sin? Like, what did you confess? And I was like, that I was mad and I was bitter. And she's like, no, no, no. What was your sin? Like, what, what did you confess? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And I realized I had my own struggles with impurity, my own struggles with, you know, just pride. And, you know, and I, I think I took those things lightly because I wanted to see his sin as much larger than my own, you know, and it's I think we have to be so careful in our marriages, just being totally open, because I think what can happen, too, is we've tried. And I think we give up, you know, because yeah. I, I think that's our excuse as wives are like, I was open. And, and then maybe we've been open a few times about it and you didn't see change or maybe you got tired of talking about it, you know, and and so we get embittered and we let that just sit and we don't get open about that bitterness that's stewed and how we're hardening our hearts against our own husbands and how that is unloving. Um, I'll just share really quick in 1 Corinthians 13, the New Living Translation. Of course, love is patient, kind, right? And it says that it does not demand its own way. Hmm. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the, whenever the truth wins out. You know, and I just think uh, that stood out to me was love does not demand its own way and uh, and being irritable. I think these are things we dismiss as wives and we don't confess it as sin. You know, because we can make it light, make light of it because it's not a yelling fest or it wasn't, you know, A, B, C, D thing that you could have, it could have been worse. And I think we dismiss those things, but we don't realize how those things are putting a wedge in our walk with God. Mm -hmm. And I know we have some women here that have um, spouses that are not disciples too. And that's something you're going to have to fight all the more to let people in because you're not going to see it (laughs) where you fall short so readily. You need other people engaged and involved to see and, and you're going to have to fight harder to say, hey, what do you see? Where do you think I could grow as a wife with my husband as you get with your discipling partners? Because uh, because it needs to be exposed. And so you can mature and grow because our marriages are so, so close to our heart or so far, you know, depending on where we're at. And yeah. so it's so critical, though, but it's very telling because, again, it's goes right back to Christ being the head. Right. And we need to make sure Christ truly is the head, even at home when nobody else is watching. So, yeah. Amen. Thanks, honey. Well, the last thing I want to leave you guys with 
is is going to sound you probably heard this before but it's 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 really important you pray together yeah. pray together now amy and i have a habit of praying with our kids we pray with them every day um usually every night we pray with our kids but our prayers together are not always just me and her but after we talked to the uh Kirshners today they're like hey look you know you really should invest in praying just together too i'm like okay so more prayer Pray with my wife and the kids, and then pray with my wife. More prayer, not a not a bad plan, okay? More prayer, not a bad plan. Good plan. <laughs> but what's your plan for 2022? Are you going to pray more? Maybe you already pray with your wife and your kids. Well, amen. You are batting a thousand, right? But I, by, by the looks of our group, I reckon not all of us are praying every day with our spouse. And I'm not trying to be down on anybody. I mean, I I mean, I was like, well, I pray with my spouse every day. I do. Well, and the kids, but that's different because what she'll pray about with me is going to be different than what she prays about with the kids. You feel me? Right, right, right. And so I'm like, I can't neglect that. I got to make sure I do everything well, like Jesus, right? Jesus did everything well. So I want to leave you with the challenge. Number one, be transparent. Hide nothing. Trust the blood of Jesus. Trust God's plan of discipleship. Trust God. Don't hide anything. Talk about your conflicts. Talk about your arguments. Talk about those things that you're glossing over. Maybe you resolved it. Bring it out to light so you can walk through how the discussion slash really an argument went, okay? <laughs> so you can learn how to mature in your dynamic and understand your spouse better. Sometimes our spouse will bear with us on something and overlook it, but if we took the time to listen to them talk about it, we'd mature in our character in our spirituality. So don't, don't walk out of here saying, well, you know, that was nice. Now make a decision. You can be transparent. Be transparent. Make 2022 a year that you're transparent. There's no shred of Ananias and Sapphira in you. There's no sin back. There's no, oh no, let's not talk about that. If that's ever coming out of your mouth, you're in the footsteps of Ananias and Sapphira. And you know how that went in Acts 5, right? Be transparent. Be transparent. Trust the blood of Jesus right there in 1 John. Second thing, pray together. Well, bro, I've heard that before. I know. Space repetition. Pray together. <laughs> I've been married for 21 years. You know how many times I've heard pray together? I've preached it. I married this couple. I married that couple. Anybody else? The verdict. The verdicts. Yeah. Okay. I married that couple. <laughs> married, married that couple. Uh, helped them with their vows. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. And I've told them all. Pray together. And you know what? Today, what Michael Kirshner told us. And I'm like, well, but, but and no, I'm just gonna pray. I'm just, stop it. Pray with your kids and your wife, dude. You guys with me? Yeah. What we're gonna do right now um, is I'm gonna invite up a panel. Um, come on up, guys. Grab a seat. And this panel is a kind of for a Q and A session.